One is an interactive audio story. You will only see basic controls on your display without any graphics. You can fast forward, pause, or rewind the game at any time using the buttons on the top control panel. Your progress in the game is saved automatically. For the best experience, put on your headphones, close your eyes, and immerse yourself in the mystery of evidence number 111. In certain moments, the story will pause and you will be able to decide how your character, Constable Alice Wells, will act or react. You will confirm your decision by swiping your fingers on the screen. If you want to choose the first option and report to the radio, swipe to the right. If you want to choose the second option and play a joke on the woman on the radio, swipe left. If you want Alice to repeat all the options, swipe up. Shall I report to Judy or play a joke on her? This is Alice. I can hear you, Judy. Finally, someone's responded. My God, Alice, where are you? What are you doing? I'm at a petrol station about 25 miles out from town. Judy, is something happening? Listen to me carefully. I'm sending Wilson and Bowers over to you. I need you guys to close the road down and check everyone that tries to go into town, understand? If anyone tries to drive through, you will stop them, no matter what. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of your decisions result directly from the situation that you have just heard. These are usually the moments when other characters require a clear yes or no answer from you. Swipe your finger to the right if yes, you understand what Judy is asking from you, or if the answer is no, you do not understand the instructions and would like Judy to repeat them, swipe to the left. The positions of yes to the right and no to the left remain the same throughout the whole game. Do I understand what Judy wants? I understand. Of course I do. Alice, this is really important. Am I saying it's not? Then repeat what I want from you. Am I a child or something? Alice! In certain situations, Alice will be able to choose from three options. In such cases, you will pick the third option by swiping down the screen. The positions of the first and second options remain unchanged. Shall I repeat the orders to Judy or not answer at all? Or maybe I should ask what's going on. Then repeat the orders for me. Judy, please, calm down. Alice! Calm down. Tell me what's going on. Who are we looking for? The state police called. Apparently, somebody started shooting at them from a car. Before they were even able to notice what was going on, the car was gone. The only thing they know is that the car is heading towards us. What? Be careful, Alice. Damn it. That car... What was that? He was driving like a... That must have been him. I can't let him get away. Now you know everything you need to uncover the mystery of evidence number 111. However, be cautious about your decisions. How the story unfolds is solely up to you. I need to go after him. Damn, they're fast. What kind of car is that? I can't keep up with him. Shall I call for backup, or try to catch him alone? I can't do two things at once. Otherwise, he'll get away. I'm on my own. How is he driving so fast? I can't catch him in this piece of garbage. I can barely see him. What the hell? Ten years later. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
Talking and play another song. This is Alice. Hello, Alice. Where are you calling us from? Uh, from work. And what do you do for a living? Shall I tell him I'm a police officer? It doesn't matter what I do for a living. I don't really care. What's wrong? Are you not feeling well? I've got a headache, but I have some pills here. I just haven't taken them yet. Oh, in that case, I hope you feel better soon. And I would like to dedicate our next song not only to the mysterious Alice, oh, but also God. to drivers, doctors, and everyone else who has to be at work during this rainy night. Oh, for God's sake. Shall I pick it up? <clears throat> this is Chief Inspector Ellis Wells speaking. Hello, is anyone there? I'm not really in the mood for jokes this late at night. What? Miss Wells, do you remember the night of September 13th, 1975? You were on duty back then, Miss Wells. You were chasing a green sports car. Do you remember what happened? Maybe, I don't know. What's this supposed to be? Who are you? What's your point? I don't know what you're talking about. What the hell do you want? And do you remember how you drove away shortly after that and left him there? That never happened. Who are you? It doesn't matter. This is about you. Surely you were aware of what would happen if anyone found out about that little boy. Luckily for you, I am willing to keep quiet about your wrongdoing. If you are reasonable. And don't do anything stupid. Who is it? I have to do something. Should I record the call? I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't care what lies you've made up about me. As you wish. In that case, I will call other phone numbers as well. There are a lot of people who would like to find out about you and that boy. If you want to blackmail me... Just theoretically, if I took your threat seriously, which I don't, what should I take? Possible. I have to 
so many years. Who could have seen me back then? Oh, I guess there is nothing I can do but listen. I should go get that envelope now while the station isn't busy. But maybe I should get my stuff first. I won't have time for that later. I was also able to record a part of that phone call. I could listen to it. Should I go get the envelope, pack my stuff, or listen to the recording? I need to listen to that phone call again. Maybe I'll figure something out. I won't find out anything from this. I should get going. Should I go get the evidence or pack my stuff? I'd better go now before the station gets too busy. A brown envelope, evidence number 111. I don't even remember what could be in there. But who has been able to find out what happened that night? After 10 years, I remember that little boy very well. He had blonde hair. It was shiny even in the dark. I'd better go. I need to find out exactly where Harbour Watch Inn is. Play by Ears presents Zoe Robbins, Rosamond Pike, Mike Bodie, Richard Reed. Kenny Blythe, Abigail Rice, Jamie Marshall, Atom Uniac, Rebecca Reesness, Paul Coltofian, Michael Pitton, and James Beaumont. In the interactive audio story, Evidence Number 111. Here I am, Harbour Watch Inn. The typical three story Victorian house. It's like a picturesque mansion on a remote island. I would even consider holidaying here, but not for this weather. I should go inside. The rain's getting stronger. So, I'm finally here. Strange. This place looked bigger from the outside. And it doesn't look that nice inside. Musty smell. Tacky modern sofas. Greetings, ma'am. Welcome to the Harbour Watch Inn. May I help you? What? Oh, m no, thank you. Oh, you look so lost in your thoughts. Do you have a reservation? And you are? My name is Ethel. Ethel Washington. I'm a receptionist here. I see. Is something wrong, darling? No, no, no. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm fine. You're lucky you even made it here, dear. The ferry was close to not even getting to the island at all. But let's get you warmed up by the fireplace now, shall we? Here, let me take your coat and bags. No. Uh, I mean, don't worry about it. I can, I can handle it. Well, as you wish. Once you would like to check in, I'll be behind the desk over there. There is no way I'm leaving this suitcase. Should I check in, or should I first take a look around? I'd rather take a look around here first. Who knows if that person on the phone isn't sitting here somewhere and watching me? Why have they chosen this place? Are they from here? No. No, that doesn't seem right. That would put them in danger. I guess there is nothing I can do but keep an eye on everything and wait. <sighs> It's not that big in here. They don't even have an actual reception, just a desk in a corner. Huh? But where does that door behind it lead? Oh, that's a dining room. And it even has a bar. I could use a drink, but should I be drinking right now? 
You better not drink. I need to stay focused. My head hurts even without whiskey. I could dry myself by the fireplace. It looks so warm there, and I'm still soaking wet from the rain. That painting on the wall is weird. A father, mother, and seven children. Must be from the Victorian era, I'm guessing by the clothing. Crazy to think those kids are long gone now. <clears throat> that person must have fallen asleep by the fireplace. Should I take a closer look at him? A male, around 60 years old. Well dressed, but his shoes don't match his belt and his hands are coarse. He's just pretending to be elegant, since he's snoring like a pig. How can he even sleep in this noise? But he looks pretty happy. Not like someone who'd take pleasure in anonymous phone calls. Hmm. However, that little family over there seems more suspicious. <laughs> but I guess their thing is infidelity and domestic violence, not threats and blackmailing. Should I go over to them, or should I try wake up the man sleeping by the fireplace? That sleeping guy isn't going anywhere. I'll go over to the married couple first. In the tub again. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry, we didn't notice you at first. Hello. My name is Alice Wells. I've just arrived. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Not in the slightest. Adele Keswell. It's so lovely to meet you. My husband and I were just, uh, we've been discussing that we don't feel like going to sleep yet, do we, uh, Richard? Yep. Excuse me, sir. Do I know you from somewhere? I don't know. Do you? Oh, come on, Richard. Don't be rude. You know, my husband is a bit of an introvert. A, a lot of people tend to recognize him. Oh, they do? Allow me to introduce you. Richard Keswell, author of three novels and the winner of the Whitbread Award. <laughs> Keswell. I, I knew I'd heard that name before. I'm delighted to meet you. Likewise. Have you read any of my books? Not yet, but I've bought one. Uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, higher, higher Than The Clouds? High Above The Sky. High above the sky. Yeah, that's it. I'll, I'll definitely read it soon. Yeah, of course you will. Oh, Richard, please excuse my husband. He's uh, overworked. That's why we're here, actually, to relax a bit. All those award ceremonies, dinners, interviews, signings, parties, they, they take their toll on a person, don't they, Richard? Hugo? Hugo, come here. Stop running around. You know children. <gasps> ah. Oh, Hugo, be careful. You stepped on this lady's foot and almost knocked her down. Are you okay? That little brat. Should I scold him? That's okay, ma'am. <laughs> Nothing happened. Are you sure? <sighs> kids will be kids. Oh, you're very kind. Now, do you hear me, Hugo? Apologize to Miss Wells. Well, when we do something bad, we need to apologize. Haven't you heard your mother? Sorry, Miss Wells. <laughs> That's okay, Hugo. See, darling, isn't that better? Mm -hmm. Go play, Hugo. We don't like to let him run around like this. You know, these old places. <laughs> what could possibly happen to him here? He could only step on someone else's foot, right? You know, a certain Reverend McCarthy is staying here with us. Apparently, he's an exorcist. The receptionist has assured us that everything is all right, but... Well. I hope you don't believe in ghosts. It's nonsense. My husband's right. However... Stop it. However... Well, you know, at night, I, I hear some strange noises coming from the room above us. When I was complaining to the receptionist, she told me no one was staying there. <laughs> Might be mice. Wouldn't surprise me at all. There's nothing to worry about. Well, I hope you're right. After all, as long as Reverend McCarthy is here, there is even a police officer staying here. Uh, Mr. B uh, Broderick. One feels safer already. Have you talked to him? I, in fact, I think he's sleeping over by the fireplace over there. I haven't talked to him yet. 
he's a distinctive gentleman. He talks too much. Oh, well, it is true. He does like to talk a lot. Especially when he's eating. Some people generally talk too much. Oh, Richard. Well, we shouldn't keep you any longer, Miss Wells. I'm sure you have a lot to do tonight. It's been very nice meeting you. <laughs> nice meeting you too. Bye for now. And you should read that book. <laughs> should I introduce myself to the man by the fireplace? Or go to reception? I don't think I'll find out more from this couple. I'll get myself a bit warm by the fireplace and try to wake up the man sleeping over there. <clears throat> oh, hold on. Where am I? Oh, pardon me. I must have fallen asleep. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to wake you up. Uh, no, no, that's all right. <laughs> you know, I can fall asleep anywhere. Uh, now, I'm not sure, but I can't tell. Have we uh, met already? Unlikely. I, I just got here. Then I'm delighted to meet you, miss. I love meeting new, friendly people. You don't get to meet many nice people in my profession. Your profession? Oh, yes. I'm a police officer, you know. My name's John Broderick. You may have heard of me. They wrote about me six times in the paper. Are you from Glasgow? No, unfortunately. Oh, what a shame. Glasgow is a lovely city. Unfortunately, not even there does the crime sleep. But neither do the police. So you were just meditating here then, <laughs> is that right? <laughs> it's a vacation, you know. Even police officers need to relax on vacation so that we are sharp for the rest of the year. But I'm just talking about myself and you haven't even introduced yourself, miss. My name's Alice Wells. Pleased to meet you, Miss Wells. Very pleased. And, if I may ask, what is it that you do? And where are you from? Uh, don't be offended. I'm just a curious guy. <laughs> just a slight professional foible. Should I admit I'm also a police officer? Uh, I'm a shop assistant. Huh? A shop assistant, you say? That's also a dangerous profession, right? Some people deal with murders and robberies, and some with angry customers complaining that the milk is sold out. <laughs> and what exactly are you doing here at Harbour Watch? Vacationing as well? You could say that. Oh, shame the weather isn't better. I'm leaving in two days, and so far it's been raining every single day. But just between the two of us, it seems like a bigger storm is raging inside the hotel. Do you see Mr. and Mrs. Caswell over there? Let me tell you, Mr. Caswell seems like a calm guy, but he has a proper temper. My room is right next to theirs. Have you met them already? Yes, I've spoken with them. I'm not surprised. Mrs. Caswell personally wants to meet every guest that arrives. She probably doesn't have many friends, the poor thing. Well, I won't be keeping you any longer, miss. I'm sure we'll see each other soon. I think I've seen enough. It's time to check in at reception. May I check in? I'll be with you in a second, darling. Just let me finish writing this. So, where do we have it? Aha, here. Um, please write your name here, your occupation here, the length of stay. Which room have you booked with us? Number five. But, um, you know, um, Mr. Broderick, are you going to sleep? It's about time, Mrs. Washington. I'm an old man, you know. Ah, goodbye for now, uh, Miss... Uh, oh, excuse me, I, I've forgotten. Uh, let me have a look in the book. What? Chief Inspector Wells? I'm sorry, I... No, no, don't apologise. I guess some people are ashamed of their occupation. Well, why not? Goodbye for now, Chief Inspector Wells. Did something happen? Nothing. It's fine. 
sweetheart. I'm so sorry, but we've got a slight inconvenience here. What kind of inconvenience? It's about your room. It's currently unavailable. Unavailable? Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, is someone else staying there? Well, y yes and no. Um, excuse me, but what does that mean? Yes and no? You know, Reverend McCarthy arrived unexpectedly this morning, all the way from the United States. Well, so? <laughs> There's no easy way to say this, but uh, the Reverend has arrived because of your room. What? Reverend McCarthy is, he's one of the biggest experts on the supernatural in the whole country. Right now, he's investigating your room. I've given him the keys. Nobody else is allowed in the room. <laughs> in fact, nobody else can. The spare key's gone missing. <sighs> Miss Washington, if you're trying to scare me with spooky stories, You it's... have nothing to worry about. Everything is perfectly fine. It's just... nothing. Never mind. We will get a different room ready for you, dear. A different room? But the person on the phone specifically said room number five. Shall I argue with Miss Washington? Miss Washington. Oh, call me Ethel, love. If you believe in ghosts, well, <laughs> that's your business. But I want the room I've booked. Please, be reasonable. I am. I'm not giving up my room just because of your boogeyman. I am so incredibly sorry. Believe me. We're willing to help you, and of course you will receive a discount for this inconvenience. But I really cannot let you in room number five. May I get you a different one, please? Do I really have a choice at this point? Okay, what's available? Thank you very much. Hmm? Pardon the noise. The Keswells are full of energy. You know, a young family. Do they argue a lot? Sometimes. But don't worry, your new room will be perfectly quiet. You will be one floor above them. What do you think of them? Mr Keswell is a bit grumpy, but he's a famous writer. And what about his wife? Supposedly, she's a lady of leisure. <laughs> you know, she inherited a lot of money from her parents so she can afford it. Oh, sorry. Shouldn't be talking about this. Could I have my keys, please? I'm ready to go to bed tonight. Right away, darling. Room number... Actually, it doesn't have a number. We usually don't offer this room to our guests. It used to be a staff bedroom. But no worries, it is spotless. It's on the second floor and very quiet there. That is because the other guests are all on the first floor. Uh, that sounds lovely. Should I call someone to help with your luggage, darling? Unfortunately, we are understaffed tonight, but our chef, Mr Rogers, will gladly assist you. That's all right. I can handle it myself. Are you sure? It's not a problem. I will call Tom and... No, I can handle it myself. As you wish, my dear. The second floor, at the end of the hallway. I hope you will enjoy your stay with us. For sure. Is this where I'm supposed to sleep? Do they even dust in here? <laughs> if this hotel is haunted, it's this room for sure. Just relax, Alice. It's all going to be fine. I'll hand over that damn evidence and be back home tomorrow. Everything's going to be all right. No one will ever find out. What was I supposed to do back then? I wouldn't have been able to help that child anyway. Ugh. Ugh. Not my head again. Maybe I'll take a shower. Oh, damn it. I haven't brought my painkillers. Maybe they'll have some hair. No. Oh. Nothing. Of course there's nothing. 
by the bed, on the bedside table, maybe in the closet. It looks so creepy. Locked? Where am I supposed to put my coat? Maybe I could pry open the closet. The lock looks easy enough. Should I do it? Why not? It's my room, my closet. God, so much dust. And what's this? A hat? Socks? Is this storage or did the previous guest leave it here? Oh, it's all children's clothes. <coughs> it looks like it's been lying here for a while now. Was this a child's room? Is this a coincidence? <laughs> Surely. It must be. Oh, what a nice toy. Oh, what an annoying sound. Oh. Silence. Finally. Should I unpack or take a shower? I'm definitely not having a shower here. If it's anything like the rest of the room. I'll unpack instead. Head. I hope the only thing I've forgotten are my painkillers. <sighs> Dry clothes. I could use some right now. Everything is still wet from the rain. Where have I? Oh, I swear I put it here. There it is. The evidence number 111. It's all going to be fine. I'll take the envelope. Hand it over, go back home, and never deal with this ever again. No one will remember that I was here, and everything will go back to normal. What the hell? Should I check what's going on, or should I ignore it? No. No. I can't deal with anyone else's problems right now. Whatever's happening down there, it's not my business. Mrs. Williams, oh. excuse me. It's really nice that you've knocked, but shouldn't you wait until I've let you in? I know. I'm, I'm very sorry, but it's urgent. Oh. I need you to come with me. Something's happened. The Kessel's son... The Kessel's son got lost. We need your help. Please. Okay. Thank you. Let's go. You have just finished the demo version of Evidence Number 111. If you would like to know how the story ends, you can purchase the full game right now. Sort it all out. No, Hugo is gone. Something must have happened to him. I just know. Maybe he's just hiding somewhere. No, he wouldn't do that. Please, Miss Wells, you're a police officer. Please find him. Please do something. I don't remember telling you I'm a police officer. What? Where did you get that from? <laughs> Excuse me. Our son's gone missing. Do you have to make this about yourself? Just find our son. 
That's what I'm asking. I'm begging you. But... But what? If I go after the boy, I'd risk exposing myself. But what if something's really happened to him? Should I help? But... But what? You're a police officer. You have to help. Miss Wells, I know you're on holiday, but the Keswells are desperate. Uh, <sighs> okay, then. Uh, Ethel, is it possible that the boy got out somehow? That's impossible. I've been at reception the whole evening. He didn't pass through there. In that case, he must still be at the hotel. Unfortunately, I guess you're right. Unfortunately. Miss Wells, do you remember why we had to check you into a different room? What do you mean? Of course, I think that Hugo is probably just hiding somewhere. But... Please don't start with your ghost stories. <laughs> why is everyone just standing there? Please do something! Adele, calm down. He might be suffering somewhere while you're all just talking. Calm down. Hugo, darling, where are you? Hugo, where are you? Can somebody do something? Hugo! Do not yell, uh, Mrs. Kessel. Hugo! He obviously does oh, not Oh, just hate. leave me alone! I need to find him. Don't just stand there staring. Do something! I need to calm Mrs. Keswell down. Gently or quickly. Hugo! Hugo! Mrs. Keswell! <laughs> Mrs. Keswell! <laughs> oh! How dare you lay a hand on my wife? Are you okay, Mrs. Keswell? Yes. Please forgive me, but I need you to stay calm. Yes. Now, please go back to your room and your husband, too. The same applies to you, Reverend. As you wish. Ethel, please lock the entrance to the hotel and inform the staff. Right away, love. Hugo will probably show up eventually and will come looking for you in your room. So don't leave the room under any circumstances. But, uh, Is that clear? Yes. I'll personally check all the rooms and other areas in the hotel. Thank you. <laughs> That's okay. It's my job, after all. Okay. Ethel has locked the entrance. All the guests are in their rooms. And I'm here. I guess I can forget about quietly getting out of here tomorrow without anyone remembering me. What have I got myself into? If only my head didn't hurt so much. There are three rooms on this floor. I'm guessing by the crying, the Kesswells must be checked into room number one. Detective Broderick said he was staying right next door, and the third room must be the Reverend's. Has any of this got something to do with why I'm here? I can't imagine the drunk reverend or the weepy mother inviting me here. But if it's neither of them, then who is it? I should check on the Kessels first, find out how it all started. doesn't sound pleasant. I should probably leave them alone and not just stand here and eavesdrop. But who knows what else I can find out about. Should I knock on the door or just listen for a while? Come in. I'm sorry to disturb you. And... Mrs. Keswell, I want to apologize for hitting you earlier. Don't worry about it. I've been through worse. Can't you leave us alone now? Have you found him? D do you know anything? I'm sorry. Not yet. I need to ask you a few questions if you don't mind. Yes. Of course. Adele, but... Oh, Richard. Please, go on. When and where was the last time you saw your son? How original. Richard, stop it. Uh, about an hour ago, um, maybe maybe one and a half, he was sitting on the bed here reading, and I went to have a shower, and I, I couldn't have been gone long, maybe 10, 
15 minutes. But when I came out of the bathroom, he was gone. And where were you at that time, Mr. Keswell? Down in the lobby. Sitting at the bar. Is it possible that Hugo went downstairs to look for you? I would have seen him if he'd been there. No, he wouldn't have just left the room like that. So how come he's not here? Just relax. <laughs> relax. Mrs. Keswell, you said that Hugo had been reading before you left. Yes, he was just sitting here on the bed reading. Oh, my poor boy. He must be a very smart boy if he can read already. How old is he? Five? Six. He, he turned six a few days ago. This holiday was supposed to be a gift for him as well. I taught him how to read when he was four. He didn't want to. <laughs> Couldn't focus. But he finally got the hang of it. That's amazing. <laughs> what does he like to read? Fairy tales and fantasy. He's still slow, but you know, he's still so small. He brought Alice in Wonderland here with him. Really? With all due respect, couldn't you just leave us the hell alone? Richard, she's trying to help us. By browsing through the books. What's the point of that? Wouldn't you like to know what we had for breakfast or something else that's so important? Should I keep questioning the father or the mother? Mrs. Keswell, do you think the books could be connected with Hugo's disappearance somehow? In what way? He might have gone on an adventure to an unexplored part of the hotel. <laughs> no, 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 there's no way. Hugo is a, s a sensible, calm child. He, he, I've, I've told him many times that the real world is nothing like the one in the books and, and <laughs> that he has to be careful. What will you tell me what's so funny? <laughs> Jesus, the boy likes fairy tales, just like any other kid his age. I have no idea what we're talking about here. Stop it. It's all Stop nonsense. It. Why do you think that? What? Why do you think it's all nonsense? Miss Wells knows what she's doing. Nothing's happened. If it was serious, I'd call the real police. Oh, now you're crossing the line. Hugo's probably just sitting somewhere and stuffing himself with candy. What do you even know about him? You don't even care about him. And you don't care about anything else. I've had enough. Should I intervene or leave? Well, excuse me, but he's I my don't have time but for this. you won't leave him alone for even a second. And I leave him alone this one time, and this is how it ends. I guess I won't find out anything interesting from the Keswells. But where to now? To the detective or the reverend? Should I visit the detective or the reverend? I'd rather check on the reverend. The detective probably wouldn't be hiding a missing child in his room. There's rosary beads hanging on the doorknob. That makes sense. He's right below room number five, which is supposedly haunted. What's he doing in there? Maybe he's praying? It sounds weird. Should I knock or listen to him for a while? I don't like this guy, and I don't like the noises either. I need to hear more. What's that supposed to be? Is he reading poetry in there? <sighs> How strange. Let's find out who this reverend really is. Good evening. Good evening. We have not officially met, have we? Reverend Timothy McCarthy. Call me Reverend. Ellis Wells. Nice to meet you. Please, come on in. Unfortunately, I do not have any snacks here, but uh, may I offer you a drink? No, thank you. I can't. I see. It is the lost boy, is it not? It is a terrible suffering indeed. I pray that you find him as soon as possible. Would you mind if I continued packing? Is he going somewhere? Should I ask him? Are you going somewhere? What? No, not at all. <laughs> I am just not very tidy. 
Yes, I admit, Mea Maxima Culpa. <laughs> oh, you would not believe how many things I've left behind at various hotels. Therefore, I prefer to check all my belongings and clean up every evening as I go. But, uh, you have not come in here for a drink and conversation, have you? No. Do you really think it's haunted here? Well, uh... <laughs> I've not yet heard about a boogeyman kidnapping a child. <laughs> Alice, dear, I may not be that old, but I have seen enough in my lifetime. Things that you would not believe, even if I were trying to persuade you for hours. But for this, there will undoubtedly be an entirely secular explanation. A curious boy has set off to explore the hotel. He probably doesn't even know that somebody's looking for him. You will see. He will soon reappear. Are you sure? Absolutely. Ethel, the receptionist. She didn't seem as confident as you do. <laughs> oh, Ethel, you know, she has been working here for a long time, and she is worried about what is going on here. She even asked for a blessing. She is a charming woman, but uh, you know, somewhat fearful. So you think I don't have to be scared of seeing a ghost in the room? <laughs> you do not have to be scared at all. But I cannot promise you that you will not see one. But now, please, do not think that I want to rush you, but, uh... I'll go. We both have a lot to do. Well, yes. Goodbye. May God be with you. I haven't talked to Detective Broderick yet. Who knows? Maybe he could help with the search. What's that sound? Has he fallen asleep again? It wasn't me. Don't take photos of Is he sleep talking? Go away. I wonder what he's dreaming about. Should I knock or let him sleep? <sighs> There's no way I can wake him. I'll go check the second floor in the meantime. So, except for the room that I'm staying in, there are two other rooms. The mysterious and locked room number five, and another room that I know nothing about. Where should I go? To the locked room number five, or to the other room? Room number five, the cursed room, full of ghosts and boogeymen, in desperate need of an exorcism. <laughs> well, I guess there is something intriguing about it. Maybe a curious little boy would want to see a ghost and go inside. Or was he afraid of the room and wanted to get as far away from it as possible? <laughs> okay, ghost room, bring it on. Locked. What a surprise. And I can't just pry it open. The lock looks sturdy and I look too suspicious already. I don't think Hugo is here. Unless he's managed to get inside another way. But how? The child's gone missing. I don't have time to tiptoe around and waste my time with ghost stories. I need the keys, but the Reverend has them. So off to the Reverend. Mr. McCarthy? Mr. McCarthy, hello? Locked. He must have left while I was upstairs. He was packing before. I hope he's not leaving after all. Maybe I can still catch up with him in the lobby. Miss Wells, what are you still doing here? Where are you going? Well, Mr. McCarthy isn't in his room and, and I have to find him. Oh, I see. Are you really drinking now? And why not? A child's gone missing here. Oh, this... I could use your help. 
I'm sure that such a brilliant shop assistant like you will certainly solve this case. I'm sorry. And I really believed you. Now is not the time for jokes. We have to find Hugo. Well, but... But what? I'm just in the middle of another case. More complicated, and it requires my utmost concentration. Another case? Aren't you on vacation? Some crimes can never be dropped. You can do this on your own, Miss Wells. Are you serious? Please. Some kid is playing hide-and-seek with his parents. He has nowhere to go and nothing can happen to him here. Are you willing to take that chance? Hmm. No. I guess you're right. We should do something, just oh, to be sure. Thank you. A missing child is kind of a big deal, isn't it? <sighs> Absolutely. That's a big deal. An important one. Well, yes. I think the kidnapper... A kidnapper? Well, we always need to take the worst scenario into account. Mm. All of a sudden? Don't think about the Reverend. After all, he's a man of faith and a drunk. He wouldn't kidnap a child. Trust me, we should speak to the chef. But I need to get into the locked room. But why? You've said it yourself, that it's locked. Actually, you're right. See? So calm down and come to the kitchen with me. But... No but. Let's go. Could I at least stop by my room? To the kitchen! Broderick! Broderick! <laughs> I've got more important things to do than look after him. But what if he does something stupid? And what if that chef really knows something about the boy? Should I follow him to the kitchen or go to my room? I'd better go to the kitchen. Who knows what Broderick could do there? You'll see, Wells. The chef is our man. <sighs> oh, come on. We don't have any clues. No leads. Nothing. Exactly. Perfect cover-up, isn't it? And why do you think he would do that? What do I know? Why would anybody murder anyone, or rape, or rob? The criminal's mind is mysterious and full of dark corners. But that's complete what nonsense. What are you doing here? Well? <sighs> Good evening, Mr. Rogers. Yeah, what, what do you want? I'm busy. We haven't met yet, have we? I'm Alice What? No, I don't care. What are you doing here? If you want a drink... No, no, not at all. You know, Mr. Broderick and I, we... Enough with this chit-chat. Let's go to the kitchen, shall we? What? Only speak when you're spoken to. <laughs> Mr. Big Detective, huh? Well, take your power trip back to wherever you got that bad attitude. Just calm down, Mr. Rogers. I can say what I want. When I want, in my kitchen. My rules, understand? For now. What were you doing today between 5 and 7 p.m.? What's it to you? Answer the questions. Mom, please, what's his point? Well, I... <laughs> you know... Come on, Wells. The clock is ticking. We can either just stand here and chit-chat or go to the kitchen and deal with this. Up and Adam. It's up to you. We could just stay here. But what if Broderick is right? Let's go, shall we? Calm down, Broderick. But I... I said, calm down. Well, okay. Mr. Rogers, we're searching for a missing child. W what child? Well, the Keswell's son has gone missing. Oh, God. When? You really don't know? No what? Don't lie. Look, I'm not lying. I've been here all day, slaving in this kitchen. Nobody told me nothing. Mum, please, seriously, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not lying. How come that you haven't heard anything? Poor Mrs. Caswell screamed all through this place. Look, I, I don't know anything about any of this. I'm in the kitchen all the time. It's so loud in there, and then there's that storm raging outside. I really haven't heard anything. Trust me. Mum, you believe me, don't you? 
Should I believe him or not? Don't worry, Mr. Rogers. We just need to search the entire hotel, including the kitchen. That's it. All right. Come in, then. Thank you. We are finally getting somewhere. Mum, tell me the boy's gonna be okay, right? Please, tell me he's gonna be fine. Should I comfort him? I really don't know. We don't have the time, Mr. Rogers, so we should carry on with our search. Yeah, uh, okay, okay, then. Sorry. Come in. This is our kitchen. Nothing special. <laughs> Three stoves, two ovens. I work here alone. You know, a lot of people used to visit this hotel. There used to be, well, three or four of us here, but now, especially in the off-season, I, I usually make, like, five or, or ten portions for each meal, depending on the day and reservations. Most of that's for the staff. Otherwise, it's to order. And what's that noise? Central ventilation. I've been telling them it needs fixed for a while now. Still nothing. Okay, now I understand why you couldn't hear Mrs. Keswell. I'm a little grumpy all the time. What? Nothing. It doesn't seem like a child could hide here. I've told you so. It's pretty tight in here. I would have noticed it. Make no mistake, dear colleague. You have to search in places you wouldn't normally think of checking. What about the oven? Hmm? Oh, please. There's nothing in there. And what about the pot? You can't be serious. Roderick, what are you doing? It's better to check everything. Go ahead, then, Sherlock. I'm making clam chowder in that for tomorrow. Really hot. As it should be. Mr. Rogers, and what about these two doors? What? These two doors. Oh, one leads to the dry storage and the other one to the walk-in freezers. May I have a look inside, please? If you want to, but I'm telling you, nobody's there. Check the lobby, the rooms, the cellar, I don't know. Keep your advice to yourself and open the door. Fine. Where do you want to have a look? Should I check the storage room or the walk-in freezer? Open the freezer, please. You're all right. <laughs> Hurry up! Why don't you try it yourself? It's stuck! That needs some serious muscles. <sighs> and that's certainly something a little boy doesn't have. Well, uh, that's true, but who knows? Maybe someone locked him in there. And who would that be? I never share sensitive information with suspects. Oi! Stop it and just open it, Mr. Rogers. All right, all right. Nothing. No, just, just frozen meat. It's so cold in here. Minus ten marks. What? There's nothing in here. Roger. Turn the ventilator off. I can't hear a word. Haven't you heard? Turn it off. Oh, God I have, but I'm not going to do it. Oh, please. Play with me. Oh, can you two stop it? The operating room clearly states that the ventilation must be on during the kitchen's operating hours. I don't care about your rules. Just turn them off. like this. You obviously won't stop arguing, so one of you needs to go. But it's my kitchen. My investigation. Stop it! Who should I send away? The chef or the detective? Broderick, leave us alone for a moment. What? You heard. Dear colleague... Broderick, please. Come on. This is my case. Give me five minutes, and I'll make him tell me things he doesn't even know. That's exactly what I'm worried about. I admit, maybe I'm a bit harsh, but you don't know this job as I do. That chef must be hiding something. We're this close. Come on. You're drunk. You reek of it. I've just had one drink, nothing more. Just calm down a little. I'm fine. Please. No. That can't be. You can't do this to me. This is my investigation, my big chance. 
Just go to your room and sleep it off. You'll feel better in the morning. I need to find that freaking child. Do you understand me? I have to find him. <sighs> I'll find him. Don't worry. That won't help me. It has to be me. I finally have to prove that I can handle it, that I can do it. Oh, oh all right. It's like that. I'll find him myself. You'll see. I think we can do without the ventilation now. There was nothing in the freezer, so I'll have a look in the storage. Could you open it, please? Yeah, yeah, sure. Nothing at all. No, just a couple of preserves. Potatoes. Soldier, the boy's not here. Mr. Rogers, look, you seem like a pretty normal guy. What was that all about? That partner of yours started it. He's not my partner. They say you're angry all the time. Why? Well, uh... What's bothering you? Oh, nothing. Come on. When I say it's nothing, then it's nothing. Why don't you all just leave me alone? Where are you going? I'm going out. I'm done with all this talking. He's starting to get angry again. Should I keep questioning? Everybody in this bloody hotel... Mr. Rogers! Go and do one. Please, wait! And so can you. I need your help. Why would I do that? But think about the child. I don't care. What if something has really happened to him? But I, I don't know where he is. Well, unlike me, you know a lot about this hotel. Try checking the cellar. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Could you please take me there? No, no, no. no please. No. Stop begging. I'm leaving. You don't need to worry. You're not a suspect. Look, that's not my point. Then... What is? I'm just not going to that cellar! But why? <sighs> because... my wife died there. I didn't know that. I apologize. Viola was sick, you know. In her head. We used to live in that vacant room at the end of the hallway. Huh. There were links. It was cold in there. But we were doing just fine. I wanted to build a house for us. We were supposed to have kids, you know? Happy family. Everything was just fine. But one morning, I just didn't find her there. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> Ethel from reception will give you the sun. I'm not going there with you. Great. Well done, Alice. All I wanted was to come here, hand over the evidence and get out of here. I wish I could just go to my room, pack my bags and get away from this place and all of these people. But that's not possible anymore. Not now. I can't leave until that little boy is found. Should I have another look around here? I'll have another look around here, just in case. <laughs> Nothing. Broken tiles, dirty dishes, but no sign that Hugo has been here. What's this? It's a photo. A pregnant woman standing in front of the hotel. That must be Viola, his wife. She was so pretty. She doesn't seem sick. But how can one tell from a photo? I should go to the reception and ask about the cellar. I don't want to spend another minute in this kitchen.
Mrs. Keswell, please go back to your room. That's not happening. I'm not going to just sit here while Hugo is missing. I'm sure Miss Wells will find him soon. You just need to calm down. No, soon is not soon enough. <clears throat> Dear, you're finally here. Have you found Hugo? Have you got him? Where is he? No, not yet. Please. You have to find him. Well, I have been thinking. Yes, dear? Ethel, you're supposed to have keys to the cellar. Yes, sure, but what for? What? Cellar keys? Wh why would the boy go down to the cellar? <laughs> well, we need to search every room. What would he do there? Maybe he was curious. Yes, that's true. Well, we've all heard the terrible rumors. Those are no rumors. Viola did Mr. Rogers' wife. So you already know. But Hugo wouldn't... Just calm down, Mrs. Keswell. Everything's going to be okay. I just... I can't calm down. I understand. I can't just sit and... I can't. I... I... Ms. Washington, please give me the keys. But you can't go there. It, it, it's uh, not... Please. This won't get us anywhere. All right, then. But don't come telling me I haven't warned you. This isn't about any regulation. Nobody should go down there. Just go down this hallway and turn right. Mm -hmm. There's a door at the end, and you'll need to use this key. Okay. Then down there, under the stairs, there is another door, and that's this key yeah. right here. Okay. But please, don't be down there for too long. All right, thank you. I'll go with you. What? Mrs. Keswell, please. No, no, I have to. That's, that's not really a good idea. I, I don't care. You can't, you can't stop me. Miss Wells, please take me with you. Should I take her with me? I suppose I can't convince you to stay in your room, can I? No. Okay, Mrs. Caswell, you can come with me. Oh, thank you. But you will stick with me, is that clear? You will do what I say when I say it. Of course. Thank you. Okay. 